Welcome to the Brand Stand Woodwind Shop. It has been a few weeks since I've done a video. That is because I've been busy doing research and experimenting with valves, and also I need to keep up with the other things going on at my shop too. I often give advice to people that if they are not comfortable with a repair, then do not attempt to do that repair. After a few weeks of research and experimenting with valves, I finally feel comfortable enough to try this project. Thank you to all of my viewers who have helped by leaving comments and suggestions in previous videos. And also thank you to a machinist from South Carolina who spent a lot of time talking on the phone with me and he requested not to be named. And also to Martin Sperber who does valve refitting. I will leave a link to his business in the video description and you can check that out if you would like. I'm not yet an expert on valve refitting but I do feel that I know enough to not destroy a customer's instrument. But the lack of experience just means that it will take me longer to do the job well. This French horn is over 100 years old and this was made when double horns were in their infancy. And what they did, if you look at it right here, you can see that there is a line right there. What they did is they took two single horn valves, the top of one and the bottom of the other, and then they brazed them together. And that's why right on that place there there are a lot of holes in the metal right there and the other valves have a few other spots too so I'm going to have to fill in those holes first and there is another hole right there at first I was not sure what that hole was but if I take this I can put it right into there and it goes in that far it goes in all the way up to right here. You can see that there's another hole right there. This hole should not be there and I'm going to fill it in with some solder. I'm going to use soft solder on it. Normally I would use some silver solder, but because the two valves were brazed together, if I heat that up hot enough to melt the silver solder, it probably will also melt the brazing right there and the valve could fall apart and that would be a big problem. So I'm going to use soft solder on this. I think that these holes probably came from the brass foundry that way. When they started out, it probably was a one inch round cylinder. And when they turned it down, it probably revealed these holes here. And then they just never did anything about it. But I'm going to fill all those holes in because I do not want it to cause problems. When I put it in the plating solution, I don't want the plating solution to get into the holes. That could make a mess. So I'm going to fill these up with soft solder. Then I'm going to level them off and then plate over it. I'm going to heat up this valve. It'll take a while to get it up to temperature. It needs to be about 450 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to heat it up and when it's up to temperature the solder should go onto that. It's probably not going to flow that well because solder does not really fill, fill holes that well. I just don't know what else to fill it with. This might be a little tricky to do because solder does not fill holes that well. Okay, so I got that one done. Then there's a little one right next to it. I'm just going to go through and fill all of these holes. I'm going to melt the solder and then try to get it into where the holes are. There's another hole on the other side that I need to take care of. And this is a very unusual job. I have never done this in my many years of repairing instruments. And there may actually be a better way of doing this. I just don't know. But this way should work. And like I always say, you just need to do whatever it is that you need to do to get the job done, whether it's normal or not. It has been a while since I turned on the camera. I filled in all the holes and then I smoothed them out. You can see the one hole right there where the little dot is. Um, I filled it with solder. I also put solder on the top there to fill that hole in so there, there's no leak there now. I also filled in all the holes along the seam on the valve. So I think it's ready to plate now. I cleaned the valve off. I do not want plating to get on the inside of the ports, so I'm going to mask that off. One of my viewers suggested that I use whiteout to do that, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to put the whiteout on the inside of the ports. I'm going to be careful not to get anything on the outside. 
If I was just putting on a very thin coat of plating, it probably would not matter that much, but this is going to get a very thick coat of plating, so I do not want a lot of plating inside the ports because that will change the bore of the instrument and it could make it sound worse. Here's my setup. I have the copper plating solution right here. I have the valve suspended on a wire. I'm going to hook the wire up to the, uh, the I don't know what you call this, this thing right here. And then I have the anode hooked up to the red wire. I'm using a copper wire for the anode, and I made it go in a zigzag pattern, and the reason for that is so that the valve gets plated evenly all the way around, because if you just use one anode on one side, then it plates the valve unevenly. I'm hooking that up, and the valve is hooked up. I'm going to put this in here. I don't have the electricity turned on yet. I'm going to lower this all the way into the solution. I'm going to center the valve in the middle of the solution. That's good. I also have a portable heater that I'm using to keep this warm. Plating works better when things are warm. And I have this box here. After I get a little more experience with this, it will probably help out, but for right now, I think that's going to work. And I am getting some bubbles on the valve, so that means that that is working correctly. So I'm just going to keep an eye on things to make sure that it's good. And also I'm going to look at the time. Okay, it's about 11 o'clock. Before I started, I measured all the valves with the micrometer to see what size they are. And I have valve 1, 2, 3, and 4. And right now I'm doing valve 2. I measured the valve this way, and then I also measured it this way, because valves can wear unevenly at times. So there's about 0 0.8 thousandths, or about 8 ten thousandths of a difference between the side with the ports and then the side without the ports. I also measured the gap. This is more approximate though. I wrote five thousandths of an inch. There, it may be a little more, a little less. The gap is a little harder to measure. As I go, I'm going to write down the dimensions, and then as it gets closer to the size I need, I'm going to start lapping it into place in the casing. Right now, I'm going to write down 11 o'clock for a start time. I'm going to pull this out periodically and check on the progress of it. It's only been a few minutes, but I want to check to make sure that everything's going well. Let's see what we have here. Okay, I think it looks... Like everything is good so I'm going to put that back in and I also turned off the electricity when I did this because if I arc the valve and the wire it could cause a problem so I turned the electricity off while I move that around okay I'll center that again and turn that back on I did not mask off the spindles at least not yet I'm letting the plating build up on those two when the spindles fit into where they're supposed to go, I'm going to mask those off. But for right now, I'm going to keep adding the plating onto the spindles and the face of the valve at the same time. It has been one hour. I'm going to turn off the electricity and pull the valve out. I'm going to measure it see what we have. I'm going to try to do this without touching the valve at all so that I don't need to clean it up again. Because if you touch it and get fingerprints on it, then you need to clean it up. It looks like point eight nine four three okay point eight nine four three that added quite a bit of material onto it so this might be the right size to fit let's see what we have here we got some it's a it might be a little rough in some places I thought I was going to need to leave the valve in longer, but it might be about the right size. So I'm going to take the valve off and try it in the casing. The valve came out with kind of a rough finish, so I'm not sure exactly why that is. I'm back. It's actually been several days since I ended the video last time. I hit, ran into some problems. Uh, the valve had like a sandpaper type finish on it. So I had to do a little more research and I figured out that I had been using too much electricity. So I lowered the electricity on this and then the plating did not stick to the valves and it all came off. So then I had to start over again. But I'm to the point now where I think I have it figured out. The valve actually is a lot tighter than it was. Here's the valve that I was working on. I'm going to move it around a bit. You can see that there is still a little bit of gap and I'm going to finish that up now. Here's the valve that I did not work on and 
you can see that that's very loose, like from every direction. If I turn it around, you can see how it moves around inside of there. It's still very loose. And this is the one that I did work on. It still moves around a little bit, but it's pretty tight overall. The rotor plate is fairly tight. I probably need a little bit more plating on that to finish that up. The spindle right there is still pretty loose, and I'm going to have to fix that too. On the face of the valve, you can tell where it rubbed on the casing a little bit, and I lapped that, and that's what that is where it had been lapped. But I'm going to lap it some more so that it takes down the high spots. Although you don't really lap things usually to remove material, lapping is more for fitting valves than taking down material, but it does take down a little bit of material. So I'm going to lap it a little bit more, and then I'm going to put a little bit more plating on it. Here's where I wrote down all the information about plating the valves. And you can see I had some pretty big problems. Uh, right here where I drew the line, you can see that it shrank uh, about uh, two thousandths of an inch. That's where the plating all peeled off. But after that, it seemed to work well. After I changed the, uh, the voltage, or not the voltage, the amperage a little bit, then it seemed to work well. So I think like 0.2 amps is about what I want. And now it's to the point where it's almost fit. This is copper plating on here right now. Now I'm going to clean this up and I'm going to put a little bit more copper on and it's only going to be a little bit more. Then after that I'm going to put a nickel over that. The valve is cleaned off and ready to go into the plating solution. So I'm going to put that in there. Black wire is hooked up, so I'm just going to hook up the red wire. And make sure that this is in the center, and then turn that on. And I want it at 0.2 amps. There it is. Now I'm going to write down the time that I put it in there. I'm going to leave it in there for about a half an hour, and that should be enough plating to finish the copper portion of the plating. Another thing that I learned that's very important is to agitate the solution every few minutes. It has been a half an hour, so I'm going to turn that off and pull the valve out. Now I'm going to test the valve on the horn. I'll try the rotor plate first. That is actually too tight, so I'm going to have to hone that down just a little bit so that it fits in there without being too tight. I'm going to try the valve in the casing. It fits in there. I put the valve into the casing and I turned it around a few times. You can see a few spots that are a little bit brighter in color. Those are high spots on the plating where it hit the casing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lap that down a little bit at first and see what happens. After that I may or may not have to hone the valves down. This is the freeze lapping compound and it works very well for musical instrument valves and a lot of other parts of musical instruments. I'm going to put that over the face of the valve. And this container of lapping compound lasts me many, many years. So if you do not do a lot of instruments, this will last you a long time. But I do not really suggest you lapping valves unless you know what you're doing because it can take off material. It actually does take off material. Uh, and you only want to take off the material that needs to be taken off. You do not want to just take off material not knowing what you're doing. Now I will say that it does not take off a lot of material, but it does take off some. And you do not want to take off anything off valves if you do not need to. I have a little tool that I can use that will help me turn it by hand, if it will turn by hand. Okay, and then I'm just doing that to distribute the lapping compound. Now to lap the valve, what I'm going to do is put my thumb over the valve like that, turn it around, and then tap on the spindle of the valve. And what's going to happen is it's going to like spring back and forth as I tap on it. And then I'm going to turn it a little bit and repeat. Then I'm going to turn it again and keep tapping for a little while. That's the way that I lap rotors. Pistons, of course, are lapped a lot differently than that. I lapped the valve, so now I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to clean up the lapping compound and see what happens. Now I'm doing the nickel plating. It has been in there for about 40 minutes and I'm about ready to turn this off and pull the valve out. I'll see what I have here. 
There's the valve. I'm going to clean it off and then put it in the French horn. I'm going to try the rotor bearing plate. That is just a little bit tight, which is good. I'm going to lap that in. Now I'm going to try the valve in the casing. And again, that is just a little bit tight, but that is good. I'm going to lap that into place too. I lapped the valve. It goes in all the way and it does turn, but it is a little tight. The valve does not move back and forth at all in the casing, and that is good. However, if I put the rotor bearing plate on, the valve will still go up and down in the casing. And the reason for that is there is too much gap between here and here in the casing. Plating adds thickness onto the face of the valve and also to the spindles, but it does not add very much space right there. So I'm going to put some shims in there to make sure it does not go up and down inside of the casing. But that is for another video. Thank you for watching and please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos.